Hello, my name is Norman Fenton, and this is a very brief explanation of Bayes' theorem. I want you to imagine that approximately 1 in 100 people has a particular virus, which we call V. And there's a new accurate screening test for this virus, V. In particular, it has a 99% true positive rate, which we call the sensitivity. And that means that 99% of those who have the virus will test positive. So it gives the correct result 99% of the time for those with the virus. And it has a 90% true negative rate, which we call the specificity, meaning that 90% of those who don't have the virus will test negative. So it gives the correct result 90% of the time for those who don't have the virus. Sarah tests positive. What we want to know is the probability that Sarah has the virus. Now, many very intelligent people, including medics and medical students, when presented with problems of this type, will typically give an answer of somewhere in the region of 90%. I they assume that the positive test result, given that the test is, is very accurate, will be highly supportive of the probability that Sarah has the virus. But it turns out that the correct result here is very different. And it's Bayes' theorem which enables us to calculate the correct result. But because for this type of problem the correct result is quite counterintuitive, it actually makes sense first to give a purely visual explanation of Bayes' theorem in this case. So imagine that we've got a thousand people, and because we've got this roughly one in a hundred rate of having the virus, then we can expect about ten out of the thousand people to have the virus. And it's likely that all of those are test positive, because remember we had a 99% true positive rate. But here's the problem. We had a 90% true negative rate, which actually means that the false positive rate is 10%. So about 10% of the remaining 990 people who don't have the virus are going to test positive. That's about 99 people. So when we look at the combined set of people who test positive, there's 109, only 10 of them actually have the virus. So that's just over 9%. So actually, the probability that a person has the virus if they test positive is just over 9%. And of course, that's very different from the 90% that I said was assumed by most people when presented with this problem. And Bayes' theorem enables us to do the calculation exactly Bayes is all about how to revise a belief in an unknown hypothesis H when we get new evidence E about the hypothesis. So in our example, the hypothesis is Sarah has the virus. And we start with a prior belief, which we call the prior probability P of H, of 1%. Now we know that there's this accurate test. We know that test is 99% certain to give a positive result if Sarah has the disease. And so the probability that we get the evidence of the positive test result, given that Sarah has the disease, is 99%. And that's what we write as the probability of E given H is 99%. So she does test positive, so we know E is true in this case. The question then is, what is the revised belief, which we call the posterior probability, that Sarah has the virus? And Bayes' theorem is all about telling us how to update that prior probability, in this case 1%, to get the posterior probability. And Bayes is simply this formula. The probability of H given E, which is the thing that we want to know, is a mathematical formula in terms of things which we do know. Well, first of all, let's just check. Do we know these? Well, the probability of E given H, we know that that's 99%. So we can write 99 in there. The probability of H, we know that's 1%. So that's 1. What about the probability of E? Well, that's not immediately clear from what we've got, but actually we do have the information for that. Because we actually know from basic probability that the probability of E is this expression at the bottom here. The probability of E given H times the probability of H, plus the probability of E given not H times the probability of not H. We know all of these things. That's 99, that's 1. This is the same. That's 99, 1. What about these things here? First of all, what is this probability of E given not H? Well, we know that the probability of E given not H is 
Because remember that while we knew the probability of the positive test result, if she has a disease, is 99%, we also know the probability of a false positive, so getting a positive if they don't have the disease, is 10%. So we know that that value is 10. And what about the probability of not H? Well, the probability of not H is just 100 minus the probability of H, which is 99, 99%. So we get our 99 there. And when we put that all together, plugging those in, that's 99 times 1 over 99 times 1 plus 10 times 99%, which is 99 over 1089%, which is about 9.1%, which is the result that we got with the visual explanation. Now, just an aside here is that I'm using percentages for probabilities. Whereas in practice, we would normally use, instead of a 0 to 100 percentage scale, we usually use a 0 to 1 scale, which would mean, for example, that 50% is 0.5, 100% is just 1, and in this case, 9.1% is 0.091 as a probability.